Hi, it's John Barker, and welcome to this series of videos where I will show you how to create a fully customised app using iCamSoftware.com. In the next few videos, I'll go through everything you'll need to know about the software. How to add and delete pages, how to link pages together, integrating social media, customising the menus, converting page types, using custom HTML, creating custom builds, and much, much more. After you've created your account and logged in, you'll be ready to create your own apps. To start a new app project, click the templates link in the header. This will take you to a page that shows you all of the templates that iCam software provides. As you can see, there are many different templates for many different business ideas. Once you have selected which template you would like to use, simply press Select. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Greenleafs template. Simply press Select and then use this template. On this screen, you have to type in what you would like your app to be called. I'm making an app for a bar in Cardiff called Soda. So I'm simply just going to call the app Soda. And then press Create. Once you have selected a template and given your app a name, it will take you through the app settings. Choosing a platform, I would recommend choosing the device on which you use on a regular basis. For me, I use an Android phone. Therefore, I would choose the Android option. This is for when you build your app, you'll get a build sent to your device. So if you have an Android device and you make it on iPhone, then you won't be able to test it. So especially for the first one you make of anything, then you want to be able to test it and make sure it works properly. Then press Next. For the Navigations tab, I would recommend staying on the Standard tab until you're confident enough using the software that you can make a very good app without tabs because most apps nowadays have tabs then so next on the theme if you know what background color and or image or text color that you want to use then you can input it here i do know what i need to use but i think it'd be easier to show you how to do it on other pages as well so i'm going to not put it in here but I will be showing you how to do it if you didn't know it at this point. Then once you've configured all of the settings, simply press done and it will take you to the next page. This is the page where you can start customizing your app. In this series, I will show you how to fully customize this page from editing the text and page links to changing the logo from this placeholder to changing the background and the color schemes, to changing the background of each individual link on the menu, to changing the icons, to changing where the page is linked to. But first, before I get into this, I will show you the rest of the template. So to leave this page, simply press save. There you go. And done. This will then take you out to the overall view of the pages of your app. As you can see, there are a lot of pages here, uh, and you might not want some of them. So if you didn't want one of the pages, let's say the PDF reader, then simply click the little minus sign that says remove selected page. So you press remove. Are you sure you want to delete it from your app? Yes. There you go. Easy as that. If you'd like to add a page to your app, however, simply press the Add New Page button and select the page you would like from all of the pages below. To help you make your choice of the pages that you want, if you hover over the page name, it will show you a small preview of what the page will look like, as shown here. As you can see, these HTML pages are 
just very basic and that you can edit them yourself. It's quite hard when you start to use these, but when you, if you know some HTML or you know how to make websites, then this would be a lot easier than if you're starting from scratch. As you go down, there are a lot of different menus. And as you can see, they're all different. They all look very different to each other. But even if you choose the same main menu for two apps, the amount that you can customize these apps make them look very different anyway. So I wouldn't worry if you think there's not enough variety in the menus that you can fully customize them. And you can customize them with HTML as well if that makes you if it makes it easier for you if you know HTML. These HTML page types can be customized with HTML within the software. Or they can be customized with just the software itself. It depends which you're more comfortable using. I will show you how to customize some of these pages later on in the series. Moving on to the native page types, these pages allow only very limited customization. And most of them you can only change very slightly, such as the calendar, you can only obviously put in dates. The directory, you put in the names of what you want. The mobile website, you put in your website. Is obviously these are native pages to the software of your phone, so they cannot be customized very much. But it's very useful to have a very interactive app that your users will use it for and not have to use other apps as well, such as the uh, note taker, the calendar, and other things that your phone can do that you would have to go outside your app and use and then come back. It just makes it very easy for the user to use. The next page types you'll come across is the geo pages. These are variations of maps and the functionality that you allow your users to have with it. The main types that you will use are the nearby locations, which allows you to show everything that's nearby to the business that you're creating the app for, whether it be a cinema and you show bars or restaurants around it, whether it be a nightclub where you can show local taxi ranks, anything like that. It's very, very useful for people that don't really know their way around in a city that your establishment might be. Uh, the, the generic map title is Google Maps, which is very good because a lot of people now are used to using Google Maps as their main source of directions. A lot of people even use it as a sat-nav on their phones now. So everyone is already very used to and very comfortable using Google Maps. Uh, we move on to the galleries. Uh, the galleries are very good at displaying your images, uh, whether it be for promotional or any any reason really. You can see all of the galleries are very very different, and obviously there'd be different times that you'd need to use each gallery. There's also a 360 degree view, which is very good for say in a coffee shop or a bar or a restaurant where you can go inside and you can have a complete look around and see if it would be somewhere that you'd like to visit. That's quite a cool feature as well. Uh, the social media pages don't really need that much introduction. Uh, it just pops up the social media, so is it Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, inside your app. Uh, the app share is quite good. If you want to increase awareness of your app, then you can put uh, share us on Facebook and then uh, you'll get a free whatever or a five pound coupon or whatever you want, whatever promotion you want to have on it, really. Uh, the RSS and quiz, quiz pages are quite good as well. The For the RSS, all you need is the uh, RSS feed from the website that you're working on. And all you do is put that in, and then you have the feed in your app, which is which is good for if people blog a lot, and it's very very useful for that. And it's very good to keep people updated with 
uh, news and new promotions about the business that you're creating the app for. Uh, the quiz uh, can be quite useful if you use it as an entertainment thing. You can reward people for the amount of knowledge they have about your company, say when it was founded, uh, who is the owner, stuff, stuff along those lines. So it would reward customers for the amount of knowledge they have about your business, which is something that's very useful for advertising and marketing. If people know a lot about your business, then they'd obviously be more inclined to go to you again. For the coupons, the scanner page types, uh, these are very good for increasing customer loyalty, which is something that a lot of businesses are struggling with nowadays, as people don't really like flyers and coupons. Uh, if you have GP GPS coupons, then they sign in when they come to your place, and then if they say unlock four, then they get a discount, or if you're a restaurant, maybe a free starter, or something along those lines. Uh, the QR codes. The QR codes are something that you see around quite a lot nowadays, so it's something that a lot of businesses are aware of, and they should, I think that it's a very good idea to have these around, that people don't know what they are, so if you have a QR scanner for your place on your app, it will give them a reason to download your app and use it to find out what the QR codes are for, and if they scan the QR codes and they get a 5% off their next order or something, then they'll be inclined to come back to you more often. Uh, with the general loyalty coupons, you can have this for any promotion you like. As you can see at the top it's four, it can be five, six, seven, however many you want. You customise the name, the background, everything. And the way you put these in are your, your employees will have a code and when the customer hands them your phone, hands them their phone, they will type in the code and then it will put a stamp over the space where the stamps go. These coupons and loyalty codes are promotion. a very new and appealing way to advertise your promotion. Instead of on flyers, handing them out on the street, and coupons that come through the door, and junk mail, where people generally just throw it away. Whereas with these sorts of interactive coupons, the customer could never throw them away and it's always available for them. With the QR code scanner and the original coupon collector, the client can keep their promotions changing. And when a customer redeems a coupon, whether it be the QR code or the original or the GPS, they'll be hinted to share their coupon on Facebook. So you get extra advertising as well as the return custom. If you want to put a PDF into your app, then simply choose one of the PDF pages, as shown here, and then upload your PDF, and then it's done. That's all you have to do. It's very simple, very simple to do a PDF. With the games, these are obviously not very customizable because they're games. But with the puzzles and the memo game, uh, you can upload your own images to it. So you could, for example, have uh, your client's logo or uh, one of their new posters, uh, some sort of advertisement on there. And then your the customers of wherever you're building an app for will then play games and keep their logo and their advertisement strategy in their head, which is obviously very good for business. And finally, we get to the custom code page types. Uh, these are native to Apple, so you cannot have them on Android phones, but they do allow you to upload and edit Apple source code files within iCampSoftware.com, which is very cool. Okay, now I've run through the basics. I will add the PDF reader, which I took off earlier, in case we need it. So PDF reader one, then all you do is create the page, and here we are. This is the page that we've added. So just to go back to the overall view of the app, I'll just press save and done. Here we go, we are back to where we started. Okay, now I've run through the basics of the pages that you can find and add to your app that you can build on iCamSoftware.com. In the next video, I will start customizing the app 
starting with the homepage. Until then, thanks for watching.